Hi, hope your week one is going well so far. I've really enjoyed seeing what everyone's been posting on our Padlet, the images you've posted and the stories you've told. Uh, not too surprisingly, uh, a number of you ha have mentioned kind of different career options that you're thinking about. Totally understandable. You've tried a lot of things during your time at the School of Art and you love, you know, more than one of them. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm here to tell you to focus. Uh, so a whole bunch of people mentioned multiple things. You know, Asia talks about, well, I'm really been focused on animation, but I think I want to do fashion design, which if that's the choice, then awesome. But, uh, you know, probably trying to keep both of those balls in the air at the same time uh, is tough. Sydney, I think, mentioned more things than anyone, probably. Uh, Sydney talked about illustration and photography, but then more recently about fiber and metals and ceramics, going to grad school, but then at some future point having a tattoo career. So, um, oh, and just because Sydney, I guess, knew I was going to be saying this, she said, uh, yeah, I really hate that culture forces us to like narrow into one thing when we are like, you know, these complex human beings who have many interests. So Sydney's point is well taken, but I believe that the best way to pursue a career and to be an artist is to focus. Uh, there are no rules in Art 490. There are only suggestions. So everything that I say, it's never a you must, it's this is what I think might be helpful. So Sydney or anyone else, free to blow me off and you know do whatever you choose. I really believe though, in, 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 I really believe that the most important thing to do is to pick one thing. This isn't a forever draconian Sophie's choice, I'm giving away my children, it isn't that. It's, I like more than one thing. I have multiple interests. I'm a complex human being. I'm gonna focus on one thing for a while to try to get an art career started. And a couple years from now, somewhere down the road, I'm going to look back on you know, what I gave up to focus on one thing and say, you know, do I really miss it? Maybe I should go back and, and look at that. Or, Eh, you know, it, it's, it's great, but I don't have to do that. I'm happy with what I am doing now. You, you get to check. Life is long. It's lived in chapters. You're completing the School of Art chapter. Uh, a number of you are thinking about starting the grad school chapter. Quick note on that. I highly encourage, it's, it's, it's another suggestion, it's not a rule, and it's a, it's a small suggestion. It's not like the big suggestion, pick one thing. But my small suggestion is take a gap year between undergrad and grad school. Going to school is really a privilege. We are so lucky to have these kinds of opportunities, but often it doesn't feel like a privilege because we're burnt out because we've been in school since forever. So gap year might be good, but uh, yes, gap year, uh, look to galleries to start my gallery fine art career, look to employers or clients to start my commercial art career, all good choices. Um, the elevator pitch, the, thir the 30 second thing, which seems so crass when somebody, again, I'm not picking on Sydney at all. I'm going to mention Sydney's name 50 times. I'm not picking on you. I, it's just a nice example for all of us. The elevator pitch, the 30 second thing that seems like, oh, you know, I'm an artist. I'm a rich human being. And now you just want me to have like three sentences. It's not that that's the sum total of who you are. Obviously it isn't. It is that um, it's, it's just really hard to connect to people if you say you do everything. Uh, when you say, I do this and this and this and this, or when you say, I do everything, people don't, what, what people hear is, I do nothing. So um, if you think about engineering, for example, I think engineering is kind of like art in, in this interesting way, in that there are all kinds of interesting, uh, of engineering careers. Um, so if, if I want to build a bridge and have it not fall down and kill people, then what I need is a civil engineer. And if someone's an electrical engineer, they're of no use to me because I need a civil engineer, I need to build a bridge. On the other hand, if I'm you know, gonna build some kind of wearable device and I need somebody to design circuits, what I need is an electrical engineer. A civil engineer can't help me. 
So there are all kinds of engineers, electrical, civil, chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, it goes on forever. And they, there's lots of work for all of them and they make lots of money and that's awesome. The thing is, there aren't really jobs for engineer. You have to be a type. So similarly for us as artists, you know, you can be a contemporary California abstract painter. You can be a ceramicist, you can be a photographer, you can show any of that kind of work in galleries. You could be a graphic designer, a user interface designer. As you all know, the list just goes on. You could do many things, commercial things, uh, gallery things, whatever you want. But galleries don't really show artist, right? They show types of painters, they show ceramics work, they show black and white photography work. Galleries have focuses, and so do you know, design studios and animation studios and all these places. So it's hard to connect when you say you do everything or many things. Uh, and on this note of like not engineer, but civil engineer or aerospace engineer, not artist, but um, you know, contemporary California abstraction painter or uh, graphic designer focusing on you know branding and identity systems. Um, never tell anybody you're a studio artist. That's a th that's a term that the, the school of art uses. But out in the world, that's not going to connect with anybody. So whatever it is that you do, if you're an illustrator, just tell people you're an illustrator. And if you were you know if you're getting an illustration degree, but you've actually decided to be a tattoo artist, then just help people your tattoo artists. So don't say, well, I used to do illustration and photography, but now I'm interested in fiber and metal and ceramics. It's like, you know, if you ask me, well, what, what's my thinking on spirituality? And I say, well, you know, I used to be a Christian, but then I was an atheist for a while, and now I'm a Buddhist. And I'm just like throwing all these words out and you're completely lost. And if I wanted to talk about spirituality, I should just say I'm a Buddhist and this is what I believe or this is why or, you know, whatever. Like, don't confuse the space by throwing all these things out. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not giving anybody a hard time, but I really think if you can focus, um, it's much easier for people to understand what you do and connect to you. And almost more important even than people connecting to you is Instead of getting up in the morning and say, oh, should I work on scheduling some fiber art workshops? Or should I try to connect to these art galleries that I want to show my ceramics in? Or uh, there might be some graphic design work. Maybe I should. Instead of like deer in the headlights, when you, when you make a choice, when you make a strong choice and are willing to put some things aside, now you have a laser-like focus and can make that happen. So coming back to Sydney, uh, Sydney mentioned fiber metal ceramics. Now, those are different things, and at a place like Long Beach State, if you were going to grad school there, they'd probably want you to pick one. Uh, there are other programs that would be you know, more maybe 3D based, but um, if you think about it, those three things do have some things in common. Number one, they're 3D media, right? It's not painting, printmaking, photography, anything like that. It's 3D media, and they're all object based. It's not time based, it's not ephemeral work. So you could, uh, take fiber and metal ceramics, put them together, and talk about yourself as a, you know, a, a 3D maker of, you know, compelling, contemporary, abstract objects, however you wanted to think about that. Uh, but, you know, if we can give ourselves a, 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 a title that's more specific than artists, I think that would be great. Uh, and then, again, not picking on Sydney, just a really good example, um, really interested in grad school, but also thinking, you know, I'd really like to pursue uh, a tattoo career. So that's a whole nother direction. Um, now, all the things that Sydney listed are great choices. I'm not gonna tell you which one it should be because what do I know? It's up to you. Um, but it's interesting that when Sydney had to pick one image to put, I mean, you could have posted more, but Sydney had to pick one image to post on our Padlet to share with all of us to say, this is who I am, this is what I do, she picked a tattoo flash sheet. So that single choice doesn't mean forget all that other stuff, go be a tattoo artist, but maybe it does. Um, so again, I'm not pushing you to go for tattoo. You know, choose any, all the things you listed are great. Just pick one if you can, if, if you choose to. Um, but 
uh, we've got 16 weeks of this semester that, as, as I said before, forget all the rest of life. Make this career semester, make this semester your career, 16 weeks to make new work every week, 16 new pieces, and to go through all the steps that we're going through of you know, choosing a focus and working on your menus and, and honing the whole thing and photographing your work and writing about yourself and all of these pieces, put it together and contacting there's, there's a lot we're going to do this semester. I'm sorry I'm going so long. But um, if you just blow off all the rest of life and focus on your career this semester, you could do an incredible amount. So again, using Sydney as an example, and if you choose tattoo, I'm not pushing for that, but since that's what you put on your photo, let's run with it for a minute. Um, you're a starving student. Tattoo machines aren't that cheap. Uh, by the way, I looked at some videos with, with a 490 student last semester. Uh, of we found this guy and there's probably a bunch of these things who does these fantastic videos on you know what machine to buy like don't get one of these because you'll be miserable there's nothing but problems you want this type of machine so on and so on so do a little bit of research there's plenty of stuff YouTube's a great place for that and you know if you can scrape up some cash or if your parents want to give you a graduation present or whatever like buy a tattoo machine already like as soon as you possibly can uh, meanwhile keep doing flash sheets maybe do more detailed illustrations uh, but you know try to get that machine and start practicing practicing practice on oranges practice on yourself um, Rio uh, commented on Sydney's post I love your flash sheet I love all those illustrations I'm wa I want to get a tattoo uh, I think Rio is gonna get one soon um, connect to Rio, practice on oranges, practice on yourself, practice on Rio, practice on anybody you can. Um, but think of all the, the sketches you could do, the flash sheets, the, the more detailed illustrations, the practicing on oranges and yourself and everybody who will let you. If you really push this every week, 16 weeks, oh, and we're also gonna send you out to tattoo shops. Again, this is just an example. Uh, to talk to people. Hey, I'm uh, a tattoo, uh, I'm a tattoo illustration art student at Long Beach State. Uh, could I ask you a few questions? And you know, how often do they hire people? What kind of money can you make? What kind of experience do you need? Uh, do you need any kind of license? Do you need insurance? Do, you know, do, do people sue you or are there, you know, can there accidents that happen? You know, all kinds of questions I don't know the answers to, but um, you know, I'm sure there are some tattoo shops in Long Beach. I know like on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, you know, it's like, Every, every block at least there's a tattoo shop if not two or three every block um, you could go to a bunch of those places hang out meet people who knows you might end up working in one of those places so there's a lot of research we can do this semester and a lot of practice you can get and a lot of both again more flash sheets and you know some work even if it's simple pieces or, or maybe more elaborate pieces as soon as you can get a machine you could have 16 weeks from now at the end of this semester a really strong tattoo portfolio to show to a shop that might let you work there or clients that might you know commission you or you could decide to go for the fiber metal ceramics and have a completely different portfolio 16 weeks from now but for Sydney and for everybody I really want to encourage you make every week of this semester count pick a focus if you wake up tomorrow morning and say that's the wrong focus no problem then pick a different focus but if you're willing if you can I think you'll be better served. Let me tell you one more quick story and then finally end this video. I'm sorry for going so long. Um, Yamaha, I did some work for them a while back. Uh, I used to do these, um, it's, they're kind of abstract, representational uh, portrait images. So when you look close, you see a lot of geometric shapes, but then if you squint or you hold it, get back, uh, you, you see an image, a, a photographic, you know, a, a portrait type image. Um, so Yamaha thought that was really cool and they hired me they were creating a new line of digital headphones so they hired me to create packaging for these three headphones um, and if any of you are, have done graphic design you'll know that when you're laying out a project you often use this text called lorem ipsum uh, when you, people look at it they think it's Latin or Greek or something but it's not Latin or Greek or anything it's just gibberish that somebody at some point in time made up and everybody uses it and I think some of the layout programs even have it built in. You just can like drop this, these paragraphs of, of lorem ipsum stuff. Uh, and then when you eventually get the actual copy, you put that in. 
So that's what people normally use, but I like to write, so they hadn't given me any copy, so instead of using lorem ipsum, I just wrote stuff. Digital audio for a better life, blah, 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 blah. So we're working on this thing, and they like the piece, we've done revisions or whatever, and they're, they say, okay, we love it, uh, give us uh, printer-ready files. We're gonna print these things and put these headphones out in the world. And I say, um, yeah, but you've never given me the copy for these headphones. And they say, oh, we love what you wrote, just use that. So, okay, so we did, and we printed them and all these cool headphones, yay, project accomplished. Um, so then a while later, they called me up and said, uh, hey, uh, we need to do some sell sheets for our new keyboard line. Can we hire you to write copy for our sell sheets? Um, so when you buy a Yamaha keyboard or probably anybody else, uh, it just comes with some pieces of paper in it and one of them says, hey, you want to buy a stand for your keyboard? Wouldn't that be great? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, want to buy a seat for your keyboard? Wouldn't that be great? So I was writing copy for these, you know, buy this, buy that accessory sheets that they needed to have. Um, so here's my point in terms of this picking one thing and focusing. Um, Yamaha hired me to do design slash illustration. And as they got to know me, it turned out they liked the way I wrote and later hired me to do, some, to do just copywriting. There, I wasn't doing any design for them for, that, for the sell sheets. Um, that's cool. But it doesn't mean that I should say, oh, now I am designer, illustrator, copywriter. Just hire me. Don't even hire anybody else. I'll do everything for you. Because again, everything sounds a lot like nothing. I don't think that's the portfolio I want. I think it's great that if somebody got to know me, uh, they were able to work with me in more ways. And so for all of you who are thinking about multiple things, again, you don't have to put those things away forever. You may come back to them, or as people get to know you, uh, they may be interested in some of the other things you do, but the interest is never going to happen if you say, here's the 17 things that I do, or even here's the three things that I do. So um, I, I know it's tough and, and I know you, you kind of don't want to do it and it's frustrating, but I really encourage you try to pick the one thing you want to pursue and let's pursue it with total commitment and total focus. Why do I care so much about this? Because here's what I believe. I believe a lot of people get art degrees and never have art careers. Um, you can start an art career at any age. It's never too late, but the longer you wait, it's less and less likely. If you get out of school and don't start your art career now, if, if you don't know how to do it or you have you know imposter syndrome, you feel like you're not good enough, you are, uh, but you feel like you're not, you're unworthy, um, and then some business opportunity comes up and you pursue that, that's probably gonna be your career. Uh, you're probably not coming back to art. So I feel like it's a critical time right now if you wanna have an art career to have it. If you wanna do something else, that's fine. In fact, if you wanna do something else and you already know that, then let's build a portfolio for that this semester. But I'm assuming that most of us do wanna be artists and I just think it's critical to make it happen now before you lose the energy and the momentum and the commitment. So make a choice, pick a focus, and move forward with total commitment. <laughs> Yay. Um, let me know if I can help. Uh, our official Zoom meetups start in week four and five, but I'm happy to jump on Zoom anytime if, if you wanna, if you're having trouble choosing or any other issues, um, you know, we can talk by email, but also I'm happy to, we could meet up on Monday at noon. I won't go on Zoom Monday at noon unless somebody asks me to, but if, but if anybody wants to chat for a few minutes, we can do it Monday at noon or any other day or any other time. Just message me on Padlet or drop me an email. Happy to meet up if you have questions or if you're you know, confused or thinking through things, et cetera. Let me know if I can help. Good luck.